Let's talk about expansion. I think of expansion kind of as like being a fisherman. And <laughs> the expansion tools that we'll use are kind of like the bait, um, the worm, the whatever it is that we are throwing out there and seeing if somebody receives. And if they give a little nibble or a bite, then that means we've engaged um, and, you know, and things are going somewhere. Like I kind of mentioned, I would expect about um, a year, it to take about a year for today's expansion efforts to pay off. So the first way um, is Facebook groups. You're going to use common interest groups to gain quick trust. What you're going to do is you're going to pick um, about three niche interests from that color wheel um, practice that you did uh, that pertain to you and that are very, very natural to you. So let's say yours is chocolate labs, okay? Um, I'm a chocolate lab lover, lover, I love them, I love their temperament, mine just passed away, we're planning on getting another one, you know, but like, I just, I love them. So if you're, if that's you, don't go in here if you love chocolate labs, but like you don't have a lab or you have nothing to say. First thing, just in general, you want to be an active member and meet people. So how I would do that is I would look for um, posts and I would just go through a little bit every day and I would comment and I would just laugh and I would ask questions. So you're going to go to the members of this group. You can do this on your phone or on your computer and you're just going to kind of go and you're going to scroll over the people and you are just looking for your person okay you're just looking for your person and I don't know how to tell you what that is but I can tell who my person is from everything from the sunglasses they wear to how they wear their hair to how they match their husband and the, their clothing to the type of profile um, they, they have like I can just tell it's not being snobby or judging it's just like would if I saw this person in Starbucks, would I go up to them and start a conversation like with them? Now I want to show you something. So this is um, the chocolate lab group, right? And it's actually I'm not seeing a lot of people that are like I want to just add like nobody so far. Okay, so that might be a good indicator that chocolate lab that that's not something for me to lead with um, to gain followers. I, now if I go to adoption ones and I look, I go here because I'm an adoptive mom of two, I have had to fundraise twice. So this is a good group because I can offer good insight and participate. So sometimes when I think of a good fundraising idea, I go in and share. So, um, like, this is somebody that I met last month in here, and she's my challenger this month. But so I'm just going to go through the same thing. And so the adoption people, I just feel like I trust them really, really quickly, um, and they would trust me. And, again, not everybody is that person for me, but I don't know. It's just, like, there's just a really quick trust. I feel like I get them right away. Um, and I feel like they get me. There's a lot of multiracial families in here. Um, people usually adopt because they either have gone through infertility, which my sister has, so I understand how that affects the family, um, or they do because they're just kind of like gutsy people um, that feel called to it. And so I understand both of those types of people. So maybe chocolate lab people, it's not as strong as a binder as adoption is. So you want to look for, for things that are super, super, um, it may be a health problem you have or a struggle. A lot of times struggles make us define us um, and make us stronger. So I'm just going to go through and it's so, so simple, but see how many more people um, I am able to add just at first glance. I feel like get me um, as compared to the 
think she had nothing I already looked at her as compared to the one that on the chocolate lab so that's a quick 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 way once these people see your friend request they're either going to accept it or not accept it if they accept it great if you want to reach out and say thanks for accepting it that's great I think it's a little weird sometimes people say why did you friend request me and I say hey I saw you in the adoption fundraising planning group I'm an adoptive mom I just like to connect you look really nice they're like oh okay Basically what you want is you want to add them to your network, to your feed, and then you want to put the bait out there. And bait sounds a little bit like a yucky word, but you know what I'm saying? Like you, you want to put social media that they want to interact with. And then when they interact, you want to look for the comments and comment back. So that is way number one that you um, can, let's see, way number one that you can connect with people. Um, on your to expand your network let's look at the next way um, you can pretty easily expand your network and in Instagram Instagram stories now we talked again about the color wheel those 12 things that are going to define you so your post should follow some sort of formula like there should be some type of continuing theme and this is great because once you have those themes, you should be able to, you need to go in and find hashtags, like a set of hashtags that are really specific to this theme. So again, let's say um, once I get my chocolate lab puppy, you know, hopefully we will in the next couple months, I'm going to want to talk about her all the time. So my hashtag, my 12, it's going to shift a little and that's okay. Some things are like forever things, your health, your nutrition, the community and coaching. Those are forever things for your theme, right? Your family, forever themes. But there's other interests that are going to shift every now and then. If you've got a health issue, I had a candida overgrowth last year, that was a very common thing. If you just had a baby, that's gonna be common, your baby's gonna grow, you're gonna be a toddler mom. So let's say this chocolate lad puppies are. Well again, to make sure that they're my type of person, I'm just going to search and I'm going to write down a huge list of hashtags that have to do with chocolate labs. It might be like chocolate Labradors, Labrador Retrievers, um, uh, Labs of IG, uh, Chocolate Lab of the Day, um, like whatever. Just like chocolate labs are life. Um, lab puppies, chocolate lab puppies, chocolate lab breeders. Like I'm just gonna go, go, go English labs um, and, and make this whole big list. And then I'm going to go and look, click on those hashtags and look at who used them. And if see like, okay, like 75% of these people seem like my avatar, my person, then that's a good hashtag. If you're like, uh, none of these people are throw the hashtag out. It's not good. So you want to come up with, let's say 20 that with every time you talk about that category you can use. And then I would say reserve around 10. And this is not some perfect science that you are going to make specific to that post. So for instance, if my, like if my dog, um, let's say I posted a picture of my lab puppy, I would use like the 20 chocolate labs or dog lovers, dog kind of, um, tags. Isabella, yeah. can you quickly get my phone, my computer charger? My computer's about to die in the middle of the video. hurry you would you would you would use those dog posts but then you would look at the picture more closely and see what else so like let's say there was a post that I was in and I was wearing a shirt from the gap okay I could tag the gap let's say I had painted my puppy's toenails I could say like um, pedicure I could say pet a cure. I could say um, the OPI nail polish. I could say the name of the nail polish. I could say spa day. I could say, let's say my dog had a Lily Pulitzer leash or collar on. She wouldn't because I don't like Lily Pulitzer, but um, let's say she did. I would put Lily Pulitzer. I would put the brand. I would put the colors of that were in the picture. So the reason you want to do this is because you want your picture in your hashtags to line up because the whole point is to sh um, show up on the feature page of oops.
The whole point is to show up on the feature page, that's me, of the IG. So when I look at search, okay, this is going to be posts that Instagram thinks I like based on things I've been clicking around on searching. Well, there might be some weird stuff, but I haven't looked at weird stuff. Anyway, I've been looking at a lot of curly hair stuff. So you can see a lot of people's curls, right? And so they're showing up here. Now, if I'm wanting to search for curly hair stuff, so let's see if I see if she has any hashtags. Looks like she didn't in that one. Let's see if she did. Okay, her thing is curly hair colors. Wash and go. Okay, so she used all these like healthy hair, teen natural, um, curly hair killers, curly beauties, curly hair, hair journey. So like, let's say I wanna see if curly hair killers is one good for me. I'm going to go here and I'm going to look at all of them and see like, do I think that they are going to fit my team? You know, like, and if so, then this would be a good hashtag for me to use. If not, you need to consider, first of all, like, this is what shows up. So if you have a picture of you doing a workout with your hair straight, you don't belong here. And nobody's going to click on you when they're going to search curly hair stuff. Nobody's going to search, like, look on you. If you, if you post a picture of a bagel, like, and you hashtagged it curly hair killers, nobody is going to post. Like, and because nobody ever clicks on you, Instagram's going to be like, she's not relevant. Nobody likes her stuff. So you need to make sure that your Instagram hashtags go with what the picture is. And so you can have general ones that you've saved in, like, notes of your phone, um, but they need to go generally with the category. So, again, like, it actually doesn't make sense if she – puts in here like mom, fit mom, um, toddler mom, like that kind of stuff. Because if, again, if I go to curly hair and, um, or sorry, if I were to go to toddler mom, I to go to toddler mom and it was just a picture of someone's curly hair like in your searching toddler mom yeah maybe if they have really pretty hair you might but like okay so for here's here's some like these women there's no toddler in here right and so you're kind of like why am I going to click on you right but like this one that makes more sense right it's a toddler and it's a mom that one is a toddler. So you want to make it to where when Facebook suggests you or when you show up because of a hashtag, it makes sense. This one where it says mom ain't easy, that also makes a lot of sense, okay, because she has that. So be really picky about your hashtags. Um, rotate them every now and then and make them specific so that you get rewarded uh, when and it, and it also, it pays off because you, if people are going to be searching, it needs to be relevant. And as far as like picking your hashtags, it's best to, it's best to choose ones um, where there are only about 10,000 to 100,000 posts for that hashtag, not a million, because otherwise every, you'll just get buried down and lost. Um, at the same time, I suggest using a location tag in every post because you can get featured on your location. So whether you can make it specific, like if you go to Whole Foods, you can go, to, or Trader Joe's, you can put Whole Foods, Starbucks, like that specific one. So then anybody who's searching for Whole Foods and Starbucks on Instagram, they would see you. Um, you can also do it for the city and just hope to get some visibility if people are searching stuff around the city to find out um, I don't know, information about the city or just seeing what's going on. At the same time, you want to use a hashtag and a location tag when you do Instagram stories. And this is a good way to expand your network. So we're talking about expanding your network. Using hashtags, the reason it's so good is because you're already going to be posting, so you're not doing extra work. 
you're not doing extra work, you're already going to be posting, and if you use your hashtags well, you will organically get people to follow you. Same thing with Instagram stories. Right now, I am making a training about Instagram stories, so as I'm filming this, this is also live. Okay. So I'm going to go to the little sticker smiley guy, and I'm going to do location. Now you can do any location, like you can do, I can do the city I live in, or what I usually do is I'm trying to recruit in the UK, so let's see if I wanted to do here, a city in the UK, I usually just make it really small and put it up there so people can't see that I'm kind of duping that. And then I'm gonna do a hashtag and Again, what do I want this to show up? So, uh, coach life isn't a good one. Um, okay, so let's just say social media tips. Also probably not a, oh no, here's what I'll do. This one isn't great, but you can see, I'm trying to think who do I want to attract with this, even though it's, really about nothing. Um, so I'm just going to put curly girl. All right, because, and I'm gonna kind of hide that too. Some of them I want big, some of them I don't. And I'm going to add it, and I'm gonna show you what happens. Swipe up, okay, so the ones, let's see, that I used, this one just went up, so no, nothing's gonna be on there. Um, all right, so here's kombucha. So I hashtag kombucha. And I have two new people that saw it. Um, these are kind of on the fly, so I didn't use a lot of hashtags. So here's one where I used Greenville for my story. So if we click on Greenville stories, what that means is if somebody were to go to Greenville, South Carolina, the location on here, then I would have shown up when they, I'm probably not on there anymore, but I would have shown up in this story so it's a good way for people to be like oh wait what is she doing you know um, I want to see that and they will go and they can follow me and you can see this is the type of posts that are up and so I got phased out of that now but it said I had 53 people looking here so that was 53 new eyes this was 500 people so by using these hashtags and um, locations on my Instagram stories my Instagram stories in the past maybe two months, taking about two months, we're going from 200 viewers. Now it looks like I'm getting about four to 500 viewers per story. And so those are new eyes on there and in stories they're getting to know you better. So those are the easiest ways on Instagram, I think to expand your market without doing any extra work. Um, it's just to use good hashtags. It takes a little bit of time up front, but after that it's super easy. And then since we're still on Instagram, this is a little bit more involved, but I'm going to show you this, not because I think your time should be spent here as a new coach, but because it's inevitable that we are going to waste time on Instagram and social media anyway, looking for stuff. And so while you're doing that and you're like having a depressed, bad day and you don't want to deal with people and you don't want to work, you can actually be expanding your market and I find it's kind of therapeutic. So what I would do for this is again, like if I want to, let's say, um, uh, let's see. So I could do the chocolate lab one. Um, oh, here's actually, here's one more really good example about using hashtags that there's less people that do and being specific. So this picture, it was about just um, American ideals of beauty and, um, like why do they call people apple shape and some get to be curvy and hourglass? Like who wants to be an apple, right? Who wants to have protruding eyes when you get up almond eyes? It's like, I hate that they have those weird words. So that's what I said about it. But I hashtag things like curly hair, curly hair, curly, curly, curly hair. So it's all about curly hair. I could have also done it about protruding eyes, almond eyes, like whatever I was talking about in the post and in the picture. So what happened is I my hair type is a two, two C curl, which means I have some curls and I have some waves. And I actually also tagged it two A curl because I'm just learning about curls and I have some two A curls. I don't know why I tagged that. But you can see there's only 14 people who have ever posted two A curl, okay? Ever hashtag using two A curl. 
Well, what happened is this is kind of crazy. Never had this happen. So don't like try to go after this, but I had Dove Beauty contact me and they said, Hey, we saw, we were researching curl types and we saw that you tagged. So out of, they were researching two A curls and even though my eight curls are actually are two C, but out of everybody in the world, only 14 people had tagged two A curls and I was one of them and I had the best picture. And so they reached out to say, would you want to be considered for a feature for our Dove campaign? Now, if I get chosen, which I probably won't, but if I do, then I will be on the, um, I would be on this page for Dove International Beauty, which would be insanely huge because then in one post, one feature that they just posted, new people would be looking at me and people would go to my profile and I could possibly get a ton of new people. And that would be way easier than anything else I could do. And that's because I got very specific, very, very specific, and I knew hashtags and I knew what I was talking about about that specific picture. So I just wanna show you that. So. Um, and then this is how to expand your market with people that are your ideal person. So first you're going to, again, let's say I'm going to do an adoption one. Adoption is love. Let's say I'm going to do that one. Okay. And then I'm going to go and look at these different ones. There's ones with puppies, but there's also ones with people. I'm, I like, I'm going to pick her because she looks like she's a, Got a multiracial family, Jesus follower, wife and mother, blogger, loves adoption, coffee, friends, loud laughter. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Right? So I'm going to use, let's hope she's not a health and fitness coach. I'm going to use that hashtag because it relates with my person. And I am going to, this is how I would try to get her to follow me. These steps, follow her, go to her post, double tap, double tap, double tap, double tap, double tap double tap and then on the last five. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment a genuine interactive comment. Instagram wants you to do like more than four words. Otherwise it could be a spammer. More than four word comment, tag her in it on the last three posts. Okay, follow, like five, um, genuine more than four word comment on the last three. I'm not gonna do that right now, it'll take too long, but why you do that is because then when she is looking through her stuff, she will see all these little like heads that pop up. There will be only me. So let me see if I can see, find a good example. So see this one, O-N-Y-G-O-F-T-S or whatever, you see three in a row. Well, it would be like this person the whole time. And then someone, someone's gonna be like, what in the heck, who is this person? They're gonna go, they're gonna see you, you're cool, you're them, you're cool, you get each other, and they're gonna follow you back. That takes more time, but that is a very precise way to get exactly who you want to follow, and then you would just keep commenting. The last way I'm going to suggest that you expand your market on Instagram is by putting together some um, commenting pods. Now these can be with other coaches. I think it's best if they're not with other coaches so you're not sharing the same pool of prospects, but they can be with your success partner. They can be with other coaches. That's fine, that's a good start. You could start one with your team and with people and have that be one and you can have as many as you want. But basically, basically a success pod is a group of or a commenting pod is a group of people on Instagram that are trying to grow their Instagram following and engagement. And you all agree to every time you post to share it in a message thread. And then everybody goes and comments on that um, post. And it just shows Instagram like this is relevant. This is good. And it sh starts to cross pollinate and bring new people in. I've seen my engagement go really far up um, just by doing this. I'm part of one comment pod. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, it's right this, this SA wellness pod. And so, so I just said that I did that so I can see one person liked it. So they, I shared it with them. So like, here's one, it will say new, where she said new too. So I'll go to hers and I will look at her post. I will double tap and like it.
So I'm just going to leave a comment, okay? And then I'll go and catch up and do that with the people that I haven't already. And so that way we're always loving on each other. This would be a great way to keep yourself accountable as a new coach because if you, if you are part of comment pods, it's going to hold you accountable to being on social media, to making posts, and to supporting others. So if I were you, I would put one together with some people on your team, and I would also be like, who are my people? So maybe you do, maybe it's uh, adoption, like mine's adoption, so maybe I would put together like a pod of five women that were trying to raise awareness with adoption and loved posting about it and trying to grow their feed, speak, write a blog, whatever. And I would say, hey, do you want to do a comment pod together? I would teach them the rules. We would be one. Then maybe I would do one with like chocolate labs. Hey, do you, are you trying to grow yours? Like maybe I do a, one with curly hair. This is something I should do, but this will help your engagement and bring new people to you. And then lastly, I want to suggest that you grow and expand your network in person. And so again, this is taking cold market people you don't know, and over time they become your warm market people that feel close to you. This is going to allow you to get out of the house and live your life, which is ultimately what is very, very attractive about coaching is people who are living their life, not waiting to create success, not waiting to make a bunch of money, but are living in a way that they love their life, that they love their body, that they're free, that they're more confident. So get out of the house, be part of play groups, join Bible studies. Um, one of my coaches, Lindsay, she is, she auditions for plays and she's part of, she does like local theater. So she's meeting a ton of people. They do workouts with her. She's bringing people in that way. She's getting in person. Every time you're out, make sure that you feel confident. Like, so whatever that means to you, maybe you're confident just putting a ball cap on, no makeup, do that. That's good. Maybe you're like, I have to have mascara then make sure you have mascara so that you are ready to look at people in the eye um, and make friends with them. When you're out, try to meet somebody new every time, ask them questions, get to know them, compliment them, whatever it is to start a conversation. Once things are going well, just say, hey, um, are you on Instagram or Facebook? I'd love to follow you and keep up with each other. They say yes, say what's your name, do it right then when you get home. Send them a private message, say it was so nice to meet you, um, and then go and comment on their last three or four posts and just see where it goes from there. I hope that this has helped you. Um, again, I think it's very important to have a long-term marathon mindset. Right now, you are doing the hard work in your warm market. That's where you're going to be concentrating. But let this expansion part, honestly, let this be like the while I'm watching a TV show part, the um, while I'm in the car part, while my kids are taking, you know, a bath part while um, I'm just, you know, piddling anyway. Let this be the part that's kind of fun, but you don't expect um, a quick uh, payoff for. It's going to be the long-term payoff, and I'm telling you, it's going to take about a year if you are consistently posting, if you are consistently building relationships, but it's so nice when that year comes around and you're like, Thank you, Jesus, that you gave me the, you know, oomph to go and add 3,000 friends on Facebook last year because I can't imagine if I only had 200 friends on Facebook still. Seriously, I would be, I don't know what I would do. So make sure you're setting yourself up not only for present um, success, but also future success.